Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Jesse DePlantis here. I hope you're enjoying our YouTube videos. That's why you don't want to miss anything. So like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell so you will know when new content has been posted. That's like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So right now, watch this and be blessed. So if you've got your Bibles, go with me to our prime scripture, Ephesians chapter 5. Paul writing to the church at Ephesus. Now this is over 2,000 years. And he says, well, let's read verse 11. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Now I don't know why so many people love to have fellowship with the works of darkness. It's amazing to me how many church people have that trouble. And, and, and they think they're missing something. Verse 12, for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, awake thou, thou sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. So we're on a time frame. Your life is on a time clock. Everything has to do with time. Everything we do. The reason why I honestly believe some ministries suffer is because people didn't do what they were supposed to do on time. And God had to get someone else to do that. Well, why wouldn't God just do it? Because he knows people need things. And he operates in a system and he will not walk out of that system. Because he bound himself with Psalms 89, 34, my covenant will I not break, watch this, nor alter the thing that goes out of my lips. My daughter says, if you ever get my daddy to say something, me, she said, he will do it. So a lot of times I just keep my mouth shut because I know once I say something, I'm bound. But even if I said something I should not have said, because the Bible says you swear to your own hurt. You understanding that? Redeeming the time for the time are, e are evil. In our first session, we preached on the pricelessness of time. I want to go over that because some of you were taking notes, so you make sure you wrote these things down. I told you great opportunity must be prepared for, not just simply waited for. So many people waiting on something when you ought to be preparing for something. Opportunity does not come loudly, but it often comes suddenly and stealthily, taking you unawares. This was on the first day we preached. The real difference between people is not in their chances, but in their ability to recognize their chances. Then we close out that first session with opportunities of time lead to solemn issues of eternity. What I'm doing here determines what I'll be and what I'm going to do when I get there. Now, you got to understand that. Let me explain that for a minute. What you do here has got to last for eternity because it will be the foundation of what you're going to do when you get there. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a very important part of your living, even though this life is but a vapor, but it's the foundation of what you're going to be and who you are and what you're going to do when you cross over into what we call eternity. That's the pricelessness of time. Then the second uh, session, we dealt with the waste of time, saying that the waste of time is a criminal thing. It will always involve irreparable loss. Think about that. The waste of time is a criminal thing. You had time to do something. And usually if you don't, you lose it. It will always involve irreparable loss. I told you the need of doing is pressing because the time of doing is short. That's why God said, be ye therefore doers of the word, not hearers only deceiving yourselves. I said also grass, life's prizes, or you will end up in frustration and contempt. Or in other words, you got to win sometimes. In fact, you should win all the time. If you read the end of the book, you win all the time. But sometimes, some things we win, we don't like. Don't shout me down. There's some things God says, I would prefer for him to just keep to himself. But I'm not God. He's kind of like a parent. Your parent make you take things that you hated. How many of y'all ever took castor oil? Isn't that from hell? That's from hell, isn't it? But your mama or your grandmother 
always seemed to think it healed everything. <laughs> Castor oil. How about this, when you used to cut yourself, then they pour methylate in it. <laughs> How many of y'all know what methylate is? That's from hell also, it burns. <laughs> and they said, uh, they had to put it in the cut. Because if it didn't burn, it wasn't doing any good. <laughs> Remember that? How many of your mamas put Vicksab up your nose? <laughs> Rub your chest. People walking around you taking nose hits off your body. <laughs> Remember that? How many of you had to swallow some of it? Do you know if you read the bottle, it tells you don't swallow this. It will kill you. Am I telling the truth? And I finished out that session with only the power of the gospel can save the world from moral ruin. You can't legislate morality. Because without God inside the hope of glory or God inside minded, you can't change. Hmm. Of course, last night I did something totally different. Now I want to go back to this. I'm going to deal with the urgency of time. And this whole series is time, my most precious commodity. And I want you to write this down. When we fail to do our obligation to time, we contract debt and fall behind. When we fail to do our obligation to time, we contract debt and fall behind. I've had people ask me so many times, and I believe I've said it in some conventions, how did you get out of debt? It's very easy to get out of debt, and it takes a lot of time to get into debt. It's actually quicker to get out of debt than to get into debt. Because you don't realize what debt is doing to you until you, it's over your head. You can lose weight easier than you can gain it. It took you all your life to get as fat as you are today. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I don't care. That's not my business. But you can knock it off in three months or less if you get serious. It's not fun. I was talking about our house. We built this beautiful theater. It's not a home theater. It's a theater. And you know, you just can't watch a movie without popcorn or ice cream. So I've gained about 15, 20 pounds, and it's been the best time of my life. <laughs> but we're back on it now, back to carrots and celery. <laughs> but it's healthy. Who cares about that? We should. So notice this, you can back up quicker than you can go forward if you discipline yourself. Now you gotta get rid of all these excuses. Well, you know, mama fat, daddy fat, Uncle Fred's dogs are fat. It's in my jeans. Well, it looks like it's outside the jean on this side. <laughs> you know it and I know it. Hey, I'm talking to myself. Let me say it again, when we fail to do our obligation to time, we contract debt and fall behind. So how do I got out of debt? You see, I had to help myself to get out of debt. I had to discipline myself because all of a sudden, because see the world is on the Babylonian system of debt. You could go to Sears or wherever you shop, Target, whatever, you know, whatever, I don't know, Walmart. You could buy, go to Sears, buy a wash and a dryer, a refrigerator and a freezer, a microwave oven, all this stuff, bring it to your house and pay a note of $29 a month for 687 years. <laughs> now, your refrigerator ain't gonna last that long. They don't want you to pay it off. You see what I'm saying? 
That's called contracted debt. All of you thinking, my, my God, I don't want to pay for this no more because it wore out. Well, no, no, that wasn't the issue. You got to pay for it. And they make the interest rate so high that you can't hardly pay it off. You see what I'm saying? Now, when you understand what I'm saying here, you'll understand this. But how do I do this? Well, write this down. What you think is connected to what you do. Not too many people thinking. What you think is connected to what you do. And what you do is connected to what you'll have and what you'll become in the process. Let me say it again. What you think is connected to what you do. And what you do is connected to what you'll have and what you'll become in the process. You have to think. Because see, the urgency of time will not wait for anyone. It will not. You see, when we're always trying to defeat time, that's why everybody's having plastic surgery. There ain't nothing wrong with that. I mean, hey, I, you know, some people get in bad. They don't want nobody to know their heads, huh? They already know. How? They, lo they looked at you before and after. <laughs> and you look better after. I don't know why people freak out. If I had no teeth, I would get some false teeth. Why? Because then I want my lips at the back of my throat. <laughs> you see people without teeth, my lords, they just change. So, I mean, if you want to do some work, do some work. And if you don't want to tell nobody, they're going to know anyway. The problem is it's very hard to do it all over. You got this beautiful face, but the arms are flopping in the breeze. <laughs> the neck looked like a bloodhound that you could pick up. <laughs> now how much money gonna take to fix that? Now, I don't care what you do to fix the outside. It doesn't change the time clock on the inside. Amen. They haven't got that good yet. <laughs> So that's fine. I personally like my cracks and my wrinkles. I earn these babies. Now what I don't like is this chicken neck. Look at that thing. I never had that before. But I saw something called Lifeline or Life Lift. I don't know what it's about. I might go check it out. So the next time you see me, if I'm like this, I live in hurricane country. I'm gonna just tell you I live in hurricane country. No, I don't. I heard it hurts. I don't like being hurt. You know, I don't like pain that much. <laughs> but I won't tell you something. The urgency of time is upon me. But that's okay. Write this down. We should not be bound by the horizon of time. The days are evil. That's true. But they are big with faith. The days are evil. And when I see evil things on the television, I go, oh, the day is big with faith. I have an opportunity to change this by redeeming it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Psalms 107 verse 2. For he hath redeemed us from the hand of the enemy. Let me say it again. We should not be bound by the horizon of time. The days are evil, but they are big with faith. So when I see these things, I go, oh, it challenges me to move farther, further, faster, and higher. Because I can accomplish what I set my mind to do. Why? How do I know that? That's not arrogance. Because I have the mind of Christ. Amen. I have the hope of glory. I have the nine fruits, the nine gifts, the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I have so much to change evil days. The days are big with faith. You believe in God for your husband. What do I do? It's his tough luck. He married you. You have a promise older than he is of your family down to a thousand generations. Kathy proved that with me. I enjoyed going to hell. I enjoyed sinning. I never said, oh, it's been tough. Not me, buddy. I enjoyed drinking, taking trips and never left my house. Called drugs. Woo, just come on back. I enjoyed seeing things in color.
Now you got to break through that enjoyment. And she did through the word of God. Her, her and my mother. You know, it was very hard to explain my mom. My mom was such a strong individual. I have a friend of mine who built my house, uh, Richard Pichon. It's actually pigeon, if you want to see it in English, but Pichon, French. And his grandfather used to tell him this. And I thought, that's a perfect thing of my mama. And, and the best way to say it is that they would say, you'll never be the man your mama was. <laughs> you'll never be the man your mama was. How many of y'all had a mama like that? Oh, your mama was something. Your mama controlled everything, right? My mother controlled everything. Nobody knew what to do in the holidays, so they'd call her. Her name was Velma. They called her Velma. Vel, what we doing? Where are we going? What are we eating? This is what we're going to do. Follow me. You just did. So all my cousins came together. All my uncles, my aunts, all of them, you know. I mean, because, but they always called my mother. She was the oldest girl, the oldest daughter. And you just did what she said. Mama fight you in a second. I've seen my mama hit a man, knock him out. Oh, my mama was tough. I'm not, I'm not exactly, my mama was tough. You raised in New Orleans. You do what you gotta do. I'll never be the man my mama was. And mama let daddy believe that he was the head of the house. Everyone knew it, including the dog, that he wasn't. But we just didn't want to hurt his feelings. <laughs> the days may be evil, but they're big with fate, F-A-T-E. Not faith, fate. See, I determine who I am. You know, someone questioned me on something when I preached last night, not here. I preached that just not long ago at our home church. I, I didn't have a lot of time to get into it. If you really want to know more about that, I got that at my office. I'm not trying to sell it to you. Nothing like that. I don't have it here, none of that. It's so brand new. But mom would showed me things on how to operate and function. She said, if you're waiting on somebody to help you, you're always, you're burning daylight. I think she heard that from John Wayne. Because <laughs> I saw a couple of movies. He said, you're burning daylight. I said, he got that from my mama. <laughs> no, I think it's the exact opposite. I think, I think anyway, that I don't think my mother ever met John Wayne, but uh, uh, she used those things. And every time I came in, she said, what did you do today? Because you'll never have to do it again if you did it right. Which with me is that you keep going further. She was not moved by the horizon of time. And she always asked me, what are you going to be when you grow up? What are you going to do? Well, mama, I don't know. Now, that's a dumb thing to say. Now, you think about it. And then she come up with the religious stuff, which I drove me crazy. I talked to the Lord. This is what he said you're going to do, mama. I ain't doing any of that. And she'd say, you stupid thing. <laughs> I bought my mother a home. Uh, but the only good thing I guess I did as a sinner, I bought her cars, and, that's, and I would just really razz her hard about God. I say, hey, God give you a car? Church people give you anything, mama? No, the old sinner boy here. Me, ma, why? Me. I said, hey, God ain't give you that house. And she'd look at me and say, you stupid thing. God's using you and you don't even know it. <laughs> And that was true. <laughs> Think about that. The urgency. And she was always worried about me missing the rapture. One time she hid herself in a closet. I must have been about 10 years old. She said, one day you're going to come. Because see, mama's always home. Mama home. She said, one day you're going to come here and I'm not going to be here. And you're going to bust hell wide open. And we won't be here. And she saw me get off the bus. And she went and hid herself in a closet. <laughs> I walk in that first thing I said, Mama, Mama, Mama. I look around, Mama. And me and my oldest brother, Wayne, Mama, 
I went, Mama. I said, we missed the rapture. <laughs> Me and Wayne, ah! what we gonna eat? I don't know. We missed the rapture. I didn't even know what the rapture was, but I knew I missed it. <laughs> and she come flying out the closet, just a laughing. But when I saw her, boy, oh God, she's here. My mama was a fat mama. I love a fat mama. Because when you're little, it get raining, just get up and eat the hip. The water roll off. The water just roll off the hip. <laughs> So, and she always wanted to whoop us. I'd just grab her and sink myself in that fat, and she hit herself. <laughs> I literally did those things. <laughs> so I was able to do some things for her before she went home to be with the Lord. She had a hard time with receiving. I said, Mom, I'd like you at least spend a little time in this house. Enjoy yourself, Mama. Let me be a blessing to you. Please. And that was hard for her because that generation worked for everything they got. There was nobody, we were poor, but there was nobody had government cheese. Nobody had, I mean, you just dug it out the ground, whatever it took. You see what I'm saying? It was a different type of thinking. And you put your kids to work. My mother took care of her own, my own aunts when she was nine years old. She, had, she quit school at 10 to take care of, could take care of the house and cook. At the, can you see a 10-year-old girl doing that today? But that's just the way. And I'm not saying, I'm glad it's better today to need to get educated. Now, mama was not educated in terms of college, but mama could do anything. Mama could figure out anything. Now, you see what I'm saying? Because she knew there was a time factor. And she had to make sure. She said, you're going to get educated. You're, go you're going to do this. And my daddy, he didn't care what I did as long as I didn't bring him no trouble. <laughs> he told my oldest brother, you want to smoke, boy? If you can buy him, you can smoke him. My brother been smoking since he was six years old. My oldest brother. Am I telling the truth, Kathy? I mean, he is yeah, I'm six years old. Mama said, you don't tell it to that boy. But if he's mama, ain't that sad? Six years old. Been smoking that. six years old. And she worried about me because I got myself into things I should not have got into. Because what <laughs> I sure didn't see anybody in the church that I wanted to emulate. Because they all poor as a church, as a church, as a church rat, like I said. They're all mad at each other. They're always talking about getting something and never getting it. You know what impressed me? The streets. New Orleans. Big cars. Flashy women. Diamonds. The mob. I was raised, but I was born in Algiers with the Sicilians. You do what you got to do. We take care of our own problems. Somebody mess with us. <laughs> Seriously, I could be mama said, I don't want you around them people. I said, but mama, they got power. They got power, mama. Yeah, but they're going to hell. Yeah, but they're going rich, mama. <laughs> Satan to blind you with many, many terrible things. You see what I'm saying? Write this down. What she was trying was tell me this. Whenever greatness is achieved, it is through the force of well-kept rules. Whenever greatness is achieved, it is through the force of well-kept rules. Mama expected us to keep the rules. Let me help everybody in here. God expects you to keep the rules. That's what brings discipline, dedication and commitment to your life, this urgency of time. When will we keep the rules? How many times do you have to hear a sermon on tithing before you start? 
How many times does somebody have to tell you to love your neighbor? How many, how many, how many times? When will we start to keep the rules? Let me say it again. Wherever greatness is achieved, it is through the force of well-kept rules. See? That way you don't contract debt. Now, how do I got out of debt? Some of you heard me say this. I thought, there's no way I can get out of debt. Because how do you buy a house cash? How do you buy a car cash? I mean, you know, it's the Babylonian system. You go to a bank or to a financial institution, you borrow money. You understand? Know I realized I did not have anything that I didn't have a note on. So me and Kathy went to Sears and I bought a $119 coffee table. This is years and years ago. And people would come to my house. I said, I want to show you a debt-free coffee table. I got a mortgage on everything else. You, are you sitting on a couch that, bless God, they could pick up tomorrow if I don't pay the note. But that coffee table is staying there forever. Come put your hand on my debt-free coffee table. It sounded so stupid, but I had to have a point of contact. I had to keep a set of rules. I had to discipline myself. The greatest word I ever achieved in my life was self-denial. You got to tell yourself no sometimes. It helped me to achieve, to keep rules and regulations and things. And I found out all of a sudden my, all my furniture was paid for in our house, our little house we had. Now, and so people come, I say, touch any, you can't find nothing inside this house that does not have, it don't have no debt on it. But I had to start with a point of contact, see? Because the urgency of time was on me. Because if I don't make that note, that interest rate still keeps kicking. It's every day, if you got a card in your pocket and you got some, uh, something on it, on your MasterCard or whatever, your Visa, whatever, it's ticking right now. Do you understand? Right now, you're being charged. You may not see it till the end of the month, but they're doing it on a daily basis. You see what I'm saying? Now they keep very well kept rules of charging you. When will we start using our power to keep these rules? And I'll never forget when I walked outside the house and looked at that car. I didn't know how, but I said, in the name of Jesus, one day I will pay you off very soon. I said, I'm gonna set the time factor. And you know, brother, within a matter of months, I, my car was paid off. Now I had all my furniture paid off and my car. And I'll never forget the great day when I turned and looked at that house. Now that was the unbelievable. But I thought, if the rules will work for a $119 coffee table, then the rules are gonna, and the rules work for that car I had out there, then the rules are gonna work for this big, for this house. It wasn't a big house, 910 square foot. Remember that one, Kathy? I mean, <laughs> it was a small little house, but it was big to us. Oh, you know why I bought that? Because I thought to be a Christian, you had to be poor. And I thought, well, I've been poor before, so I'll just be poor. Gave my money away, done everything, I'm going to be poor. But every time I read the Bible, it came against everything I ever heard of. I thought, they told me don't read the Bible. Well, man, they did me a disservice. So we began to search the scripture. And I still keep these rules and regulations. Let me say it again. Wherever greatness is achieved, it is through the force of well-kept rules. I disciplined myself and got out of debt. Been out of debt so long, I don't even know what the word debt means. And I don't mean that trifling. You can do this, but you gotta start today because the urgency of time is on you. Remember, they're charging you right now. Now, you know what I like to think about? <laughs> I'm charging the bank right now. I have reversed the system. Look at me, I am making money right now. Oh, Jesus. Right now. <laughs> and I set the rate, not them. I am doing that right now. It feels wonderful when money's working for you instead of you working for it. Now, when Kathy goes to shop and she, if she puts something on her card or whatever, it's, there's no interest ever paid. Just pay it off. You know, 
we do it for record keeping and things of that nature. You pay within, was it 30 days or 20 days? I don't know why. I, I have no idea. I had a check given to me one time. We have a box in our ministry. And there was a check in there. I thought, I pulled it out. I freaked out. I said, what is this check? I don't have a check. Who, who gave me a check? And Kathy said, don't put that in his box. He don't even know, he don't, he don't even know what he makes. I'll take the check. Just put it in my box. <laughs> and she did. And that's fine with me. I, I like it. That's a blessing of God. We just celebrated our 42nd anniversary. Me and Kathy. It was a good time. I told her, I said, you know, it's 42 years, a long time. That's a generation of Israel. 40 years, a generation of Israel, 42 years. And she said, what's the matter? You're, you're, I said, no, 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 don't take that wrong. You know how women are, they, they're like cats, man. The fur gonna come up real quick, you know? I said, no, 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 no. I, I said, it seems like it's been about 10 years. And that's really the truth. You know why? Time, it never waits for anybody. It just keeps going. You see what I'm saying? And I said, what do you want? I didn't ask her, what do you need? She don't have no needs. I said, what do you want? Oh, I don't know. Oh, okay. I said, well, whatever. You know, I, I like to buy something, but I don't know. You know, I don't like to buy something that she don't like. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes our tastes are different, but most of the time it's pretty, pretty on center. Well, I didn't find out what I bought for her till yesterday. <laughs> Gloria, I found out yesterday what I bought for her. I mean, and, 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 and let me just say, Brother Copeland and Sister Copeland, they treat us as speakers so kind. We have these phenomenal rooms. It's just nice. I mean, in fact, when he called me uh, uh, yesterday, I was talking to Brother Copeland on the phone. I said, I just want to say thank you for treating us so nice. And, and, and I, I said, George and Terry sent us the, this basket with all kinds of stuff. Ain't nothing healthy in it. It's wonderful. <laughs> thank you, George. I appreciate that. I didn't see a carrot in there. Oh, a piece of celery. It was so nice. They had an apple. Yeah. We didn't even touch the apples. But it's so nice. You didn't have to do that, but they did it. You know, sometimes we need to say thank you a lot. So she comes walking out. Because in the foyer of this, this is a nice room. There's a foyer in there. There's this monster mirror. So I see her there going like this. She goes, Ahem. Ahem. Do you like it? Uh, what? You, you like my, oh, that. I said, when did, you, when did you buy that? Oh, a few days ago. I said, yeah, yeah, but you told me you was going to Oakland Heart, the jewelry store, to get an earring fixed. She said, but I got a revelation when I was there. <laughs> I saw something. I said, she said, do you like it? Yes. Thank you. She said, thank you. I said, you're welcome. How much did I pay for this? <laughs> oh, she said, you didn't pay for it. I just charged it. <laughs> no. She just, and I'm glad because she said, yeah, uh, I wanted to get what she wants. My daughter says all the time, daddy, you are the hardest man in the world to buy. You have everything. No, I don't. I don't. I just don't. You get to a point in life, uh, whatever. I haven't worn suits much lately because there's nobody wearing suits. I think some people shocked last night that I had a suit and tie on. I do have suits, fine suits. But I mean, how many churches I went to last year, I only wore a suit one time the whole year. Because every time I went, they said, take your tie off. So no, I bring extra clothes. So when they booked me, I said, what's the dress code? I don't know, because it's just, just the way it is. It's just the way it is out there. So I want to be what they want me to be, you know? And I had a young kid come up to me and said, I'm so glad you don't look like an old preacher with a suit and tie. I wanted to slap that boy. But I didn't. I said, okay. You know, but yeah, it's a different generation. That's fine. But if you are going to beat time, you got to have a set of well-kept rules. At our ministry, we have a set of rules and regulations that you follow. We have what we call a handbook. This is what we'll do for you now, what are you going to do for us? We set it and guide it down. And if you stay within these rules, you get blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed going in, blessed going out. If you don't, you're not going to work there very long. 
You see, there's some people who have worked for me. Or one of, they said, they think they're going to come and pray all day. I wish I could do that myself. That would be wonderful. But the ministry is a place of work. Why? Reaching people, changing lives one soul at a time. You've got thousands of people calling you every week. Thousands all over the world corresponding with you. Our partners and wonderful friends and this great things. Wow, what, that need help. This media is copyrighted by Jesse Duplantis Ministries for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this media or of any pictures or accounts without Jesse Duplantis Ministries' consent is strictly prohibited.